Witchcraft. This picture was found in a cemetery. The writings translate directly to divorce, breakup, illness, death, misery, anguish, and other unfortunate outcomes. The mere appearance of such photos indicates something sinister, something that goes far beyond a printed photograph with a few markings on it, something deeply connected to the people shown in them and the ones behind their deformation and accurate placement afterwards. If you knew the story behind these peculiar objects and why they're prepared in this way, you would think they're enough to at least put the heart of a jealous, resentful ex-lover at ease, for example. Say, an envious person who couldn't bear the idea of their best friend finally finding love and choosing to spend the rest of their life with a partner, leaving their soulmate behind. Well, having objects of witchcraft made could make them feel better if they have the roots of maliciousness in their personality and they want to get back at the friend who abandoned them. A harmful talisman would do the trick. Making these objects is also enough to fill up the pockets of a devious, shameless sorcerer wannabe thriving off of wretched souls who chose willingly to torment themselves instead of just move on. Others may be less fortunate financially or emotionally than what they think they deserve and they want to take shortcuts thus they come to these sorcerers to help them find love or attract good luck with money later in the video we'll talk about why sorcerers usually prefer to have the talismans buried in cemeteries they have their lackeys sneak into cemeteries at night and bury the objects near certain graves but do these objects of witchcraft have a material effect? One beyond, say, the psychological trauma of someone finding out about a hate-filled talisman targeting him. Or say, beyond the relief a person might feel after carrying a protective or lucky talisman that can eventually have a positive impact on their feelings and consequently improving some aspects of their life. The question is, beyond all that, do these objects really work? For instance, how can you destroy a marriage by taking a talisman that has a picture of the married couple and burying it near the graves of another husband and wife who died tragically in a car accident? Well, a proven phenomenon in quantum physics could surprise you in how it can possibly relate to witchcraft. This very real phenomenon might shock you. We'll talk about it later in the video. People in so many different cultures around the globe believe in witchcraft objects so strongly and fear their supposed harmful impact that as soon as they're discovered a witchcraft removal expert is called to dispel them apparently you can't just burn them or throw them away in the garbage according to people with knowledge on the subject or I should say lack of knowledge and awareness but they claim there's a specific method to get rid of them safely so yes, people may prefer to call someone who makes a living off of disenchanting talismans and dispelling charmed items. If such a person isn't available, someone who is specialized in casting out demons may be called. A certified exorcist, as they're called in America. An exorcist near me. Google search suggests that to you when you start typing, so it is not an uncommon thing. It is worth mentioning that witchcraft and demon possession are often connected. Some people believe that you can have a spell done on a person in order to get them possessed with demons. This guy right here is predicting the locations of witchcraft objects that are buried under the dirt in an Egyptian cemetery with unmatched precision thanks to the help of spirits or jinn as they're called in Arabic. He claims to be talking to these spirits, ghosts, genies, and they make the bottle he's carrying tilt itself in the direction of the buried talisman. So in short, charmed items work in the way of making people panic and feel disoriented just by the sheer creepiness of finding something disturbing in their backyard, especially when accompanied by bones, locks of hair, something that is from or had been in contact with the body of the targeted person, a padlock maybe, 
and parts of deceased creatures along with mysterious writings in an obscure language and even if you don't believe in witchcraft you still feel a threat to your livelihood now that you know there's an enemy out there trying to sabotage your life and wishing harm on you now let's go a bit deeper if we were to find a scientific basis to the action at a distance that modern day witches, wizards, warlocks claim their objects to perform. How would we go about it? Um, spooky action at a distance. It is a phrase that Einstein used to describe quantum entanglement, which is a bewildering phenomenon in quantum physics. In short, it occurs when two objects continue to be linked even after being separated at very vast distances. To give a simplified example, you have two tiny balls that have a correlation at the quantum level. You take one ball and you put it on Mars and you keep the first ball on Earth. If the first ball, which is on Earth, spins to the right, this makes the second ball on Mars immediately spin to the left. It is mind-boggling indeed. Works of contactless witchcraft are also spooky actions at a distance. Contactless, that is wizardry that requires no physical contact with the targeted person and depends on solely influencing them at great distances. It supposedly controls the outcome of a relationship or changes the course of someone's life to the liking of a client without physically touching them. So they claim there is a correlation between the object of witchcraft they prepared and the targeted person. Let's look into quantum entanglement a bit more in detail. In certain materials like superconductors, electrons are found in pairs. This means if one electron is spinning in a direction, say clockwise, the other electron must be spinning in the opposite direction or counterclockwise. We're stretching the terms a bit here because electrons don't actually rotate around their own axes. They're not physically spinning, but they have a quantum property that is mathematically consistent with having an angular momentum. But let's just say one of them is spinning up and the other one is spinning down. With a device called single electron transistor, we can separate the entangled electrons and inject them into two pieces of metal. And now these electrons are spinning in all directions. Let's put the first piece of metal in a room and put the other one in another room dozens of feet away. When we measure the spin of the first electron and find it spin up, we find the second electron at the other room immediately turning to spin down. Let's do something else. Let's put the other electron at a laboratory miles away. We notice the same thing. When measuring the first electron, we find that immediately the other electron is taking the opposite quantum state. Now let's put the second electron at a different city, a different continent, or even in a different galaxy. No matter how far apart you take these two electrons, as soon as one of them is measured, the second one takes the opposite spin state, and no one knows why. This phenomenon cannot be explained in classical physics. Well, you might say that quantum entanglement only applies to particles at the subatomic level. But actually, quite a recent experiment directly observed and recorded quantum entanglement in objects at the macroscopic scale, in items that are much larger than an electron. It was conducted at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US. So how does all of that relate to witchcraft? Well. We know that witchcraft has very ancient roots. There are instances in history where ancient civilizations apparently knew about, preserved, and were able to generate certain forms of energy that we believe were discovered only recently. Benjamin Franklin is given credit to having discovered electricity in 1752. Yet, there is evidence that the Parthian Empire in Baghdad around the first century AD had a device that resembled an electric battery. In 1936, near Baghdad, a set of three artifacts were found together and named the Baghdad battery. It was a 14 centimeter clay jar with a copper cylinder inside of it holding an iron rod. Replicas have been made 
of this artifact and different acids were added to see if it can generate electricity. Acids that were very well available at that period like distilled vinegar and citrus juice and the replicas did generate a measurable voltage. So it is not out of the realm of possibility that one ancient civilization knew that under some conditions two objects that are separated at vast distances can still affect each other due to a correlation between them. And then they experimented and tried to figure out ways to control that effect. Keep in mind that the topic is so difficult to decipher that even Einstein was bothered by it. Even if there was some type of relationship between quantum entanglement and witchcraft, definitely today's imposter wizards won't have the knowledge to decode it. So in the end, feel free to speculate, expand your horizons, think outside the box, but never allow yourself to be intimidated by witchcraft.